Hey everyone, Andrikats here and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna check out another dragonfly mount and specifically we're gonna talk about the scrappy wall snail. So we're gonna take a look at everything you need to do to add this awesome looking mount to your collection. For the most part what you're going to do is farm a bunch of Jaradin mobs in the Obsidian Citadel. And the reason you want to farm all of said mobs is to gather magmots, which are essentially what you're going to need to purchase the mount from the vendor. So it will probably take you around 2-4 to four hours of farming depending on how uh, efficient you are. But before you go ahead and start farming magmods, there are some pre-requirements you will first have to do to basically unlock the ability to collect magmods. First one is to complete the Waking Shore side questline Shadows of His Wings, which starts from the NPC Ingot, and it's only 4 quests, it will just take a few minutes of your time. Once you complete this short questline, head over to Obsidian Citadel and choose a candidate for the Black Dragonfly's throne by completing the weekly war quest Allegiance to One. The choices are two, Rathion or Sabillion, and you can pick whichever side you want. It doesn't really matter who you will end up choosing, but let's be honest, we all know who's the best Black Dragon Boy. So once you make your choice, then you have to complete the weekly quest Keys of Loyalty. To complete it, you have to create a key and to do that you need to combine 30 key fragments and 3 key framings. Both of these items can drop from all the Jaredi mobs around the Obsidian Citadel. You might want to group up for it and possibly find a less crowded spot or server because there will be a bunch of people grinding rep here. So after creating the Greater Obsidian Key, then you need to hand in it to whoever dragon you chose before. And once you do that, you can now continue grinding mobs to get fragments and craft even more keys. The keys you will craft from this point forward will be named Restore Obsidian Keys and they are wanted by 4 different NPCs. And depending on who you decide to give your keys to, will give you a different reward. For example, Rathion or Sabillion will both award you with some reputation. To obtain this mount though, you will have to give at least one key to Iggy's the Believer in order to get the Warbreaker title. And this is probably the most important thing of this whole guide. In order to gather magmods, you must have the Warbreaker title. Otherwise, the mobs won't drop any magmods for you. So to get the title, all you need to do is hand in keys to Iggy's, who will reward you then with a Twilight Cache, which according to Warhead, it has a 30% chance to contain a Warbreaker membership within. By clicking the item, you will gain the Warbreaker buff and title temporarily for two days. You also need to keep in mind that if you die, you will lose your title and you will have to redo the whole thing all over again. So farm fragments to craft a key, hand in it to Iggy's and use another Warbreaker membership to get the title again. After becoming a Warbreaker for the first time, you may purchase an additional membership from dealer Vexil for 20 magmos, so you can have one spare in your box, you know, in case you die. And note that the membership item is also unique, which means that you can only carry one in your box. So once you do all of that, you can finally start farming mobs. The best and probably most efficient way to do it is by joining a group in the Dungeon Finder. Search for Obsidian Farm or Kiss of Loyalty, and join whatever group you want. You might need a tank and healer though, because the mobs are elites and as I said, you really don't wanna die. But if you do die, I mean that's fine, it's not the end of the world, you just need to use another membership to get the title again. Each mob can drop from 0 to 3 magmods and you're going to need a total of 1000 magmods to buy the mount, which I know, it's a lot of a grind, yeah. But uh, as I said, the most efficient way is just by killing regular Jaredi mobs around the area, as the rares don't seem to drop any magmods at the moment. Collecting 1000 magmods in a group took me around 2.5 hours, so I reckon 2-4 to four hours is probably enough for any group. Um, but again, depends on how crowded the shard is and how efficient your farming is. I don't have a specific route to show you, we try killing all the mobs around the stairs, inside this room down here and around the lava pools. They all work around the same, just find whatever spot works for you. Um, but aside from killing mobs, you can also get magmods with two additional ways. 
One is from completing the weekly quest Simon's the Old Boss, in which you must kill Doventhal the Chosen, and you get 25 monk mods in the end. You can find him inside this cave, past the Mount Vendor, and he's further inside the cave. The quest is offered by this NPC right here, next to Iggy's the Believer. And the other way is by handing in the restore keys to Iggy's. Each key will give you between 3 to 6 mag modes, um, which to be honest is not a lot, and frankly maybe it doesn't really worth it and you should just keep the keys and give them to Rathion or Sabillian instead, in order to gain a bit of rep. But it's up to you, I mean, returning the keys is just a passive way to get some additional mag mods while you are killing mobs anyway, and you won't need to go out of your way to get them. I did give all my restore keys to Iggy's, and I can't say I saved a lot of time, to be honest. But it's something to consider, especially now that they have nerfed Rathion or Sabillian uh, reputation farms. Maybe it's worth saving the keys for those rep grinds later down the line. After a lot of grind and uh, getting the 1000 magmons, all you have to do now is to just go back to the cave and purchase the slumbering wall snail shell from dealer Vexil. And yeah, that's pretty much it. After a lot of grind, you will get yourself the scrappy wall snail. I think it was a fun activity to do, to be honest. Um, I mean, yeah, it's farming, you need to grind a bunch of mobs, but I think that's the fun of it, to work towards a goal and even share the same goal with other people too. We did have a few snail mounts before, but I don't think they were as eye-catching as this one, um, since it's also covered in lava, which looks pretty cool in my humble opinion. I don't know, what do you think? Is it a mount you're gonna have in your favorite list? Or are you just gonna farm it just for the sake of it? Let me know down in the comment section. And as always, um, thank you so much for watching my content and make sure to drop a like if you have found this video helpful. If you want to support my channel, please take a moment to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You can also find me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash games, where I'm mostly streaming World of Warcraft. And yeah, good luck with whatever you're doing and I will see you all on the next one. Bye!